What do you think <laughs> the biggest issue in America today is? Oh gosh, the white supremacy. They're just never going to let it go. They're never mm-hmm. going to let it go. I think I've testified twice in on hearings where they are trying to tell you that white supremacy is the biggest issue. You were at the hate, the hate crime hearing where yeah. you just ruined everybody. Yeah. You fact checked everybody in real time. <laughs> Jerry Nadler, everybody was like, uh, you had everybody stunned, which was amazing. If people haven't seen it, go check and that, that. And that's infuriating because it, it, I remember I said in my congressional testimony, if I had to make a list of 100 things <laughs> that were impacting Americans, white supremacy wouldn't make the list. And I'm, mm-hmm. I mean that seriously. Um, gosh, what would be first? That's a very good question. I can I can give you a, a few things that are rank very importantly, but I don't want to say what I would say is is first. But the family unit being destroyed is is if it's not one, it's two. Um, what what's happening with families and you know the governments creeping into our homes in in regards to you know making people believe that marriage is not aspirational, that only happens in a society that's heading towards Marxist ideologies. And that is literally the, the Karl Marx doctrine, right? That if the gov- if a government wants full omnipotence, it has to break down the family unit because the family unit stands in opposition uh, to government omnipotence. So I would probably say every ill that we're seeing in society right now that which you might think are unrelated are actually all related to destroying the family unit. So sometimes you say, you know, why are they on this climate change thing? And then you go, why are they fighting trans bathroom signs? And what's with this LGBTQ stuff? If you look at, examine all of these issues and you realize what they have in common, it's that they are attacking families. So climate change, they're telling children don't have kids. Don't have kids. Mm. It's irresponsible. The planet's not going to be here for ten years. Meghan and Harry got an award because they agreed to only have two kids. Yeah. It's about the shrinking of the family unit, which is it's totally bizarre. Um, the LGBTQ stuff. It, yeah. If kids are chopping off their parts, you're gonna, they're not going to yeah. build have a productive have family. Yeah. 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 You know, there's no nuclear family unit. If it's two lesbians or two two gay people, um, more power to the government. You've got to turn to the government to even have a child, which is is now coming down the pipeline with all of those things. Um, and so, yeah, when I examine. In every issue that we're fighting, you can see that what the government is actually doing is trying to interrupt the family unit. Mm-hmm. So I would say that that's the number one issue. And, and your it, friend Larry Elder said the exact same thing. He put that at number one. He put number that? one. Oh, right? he he and then he, I mean, obviously a guy like that Father said very households. nice things. I want to see what else she's going to say. Let, let me see what else she's going to say. What else would you say? Well, so I was saying like, I would put family issues first because every other societal ill follows it, you know? So when we're, even when I'm talking Got about it. the education system, yeah. right? And, and what's going on and kids are getting systematically dumber across Baltimore. They can't find a single child that's proficient in reading and writing, but talk to the kid about BLM and they're gonna be like, oh yeah, no, absolutely. They're training little Marxists. The kids actually know nothing. They're essentially toddlers. Like when you see a toddler throwing a temper tantrum, they don't understand why. And and so they just blame rich people, right? It must be because of rich people that I failed in life. No, it's because you literally couldn't pass a, a, a basic reading exam and you were your life was cut off for you before you even graduated. And but when you look at that again, it brings you back to the family unit. Uh, mm. Culture is a major problem. Uh, uh, Hollywood and culture is is definitely up there. And but they're again reinforcing the breakdown of family, the overt sexualization, the perversion. I mean, that's what I'm saying about not importing American values. That is one of the most. I would say that is the most disgusting thing right now that's happening in America is is this this the over sexualization of our culture and I look at other countries and I'm like no I'd much I'd much rather be importing those values right <laughs> why what are we exporting right now mm-hmm. when you look at what celebrities are endorsing and the um overt, overt sexuality obviously you brought up that I did the whatever podcast it's, yep. it broke my heart to sit across from a 22 year old who sleeps with 10 men a night and her answer is, "Well, I make money. You know, yeah. I make I make a hundred thousand dollars a year. You're 22 years old, and you look like you're you're possessed by a demon because you are. Yeah. Right? There, our culture is demonic. And um, where would you put feminism on this? Because that's essentially what it comes down to: the, the, family. the monetization and the sexualization yeah. and the commoditization. Feminism is the number one attack on family. Right? Yeah. I mean, what are they telling women? Men ain't shit. You know, you don't get your bag, girl. You don't need get your no bag. Yeah. yeah. That kind of that's disgusting. You shouldn't be having children. There's a whole culture called Dinks on TikTok. Dual income, no, no kids. kids. Yeah, yeah you know, they're getting millions, millions of views. My life is so great. I don't have. This is mm-hmm. literally the simulation right now that women are existing. 
existing under and believing that uh, that they shouldn't be that men are, are crap mm. and and by the way there's a response to that which we can talk about I talk a lot about masculinity and the decline of masculinity because feminists have been bashing men over the head about being men and mm -hmm. how men don't have a lot of leaders and, and people that they can rely on and so we're, we're just now kind of seeing a response to the hyper feminization of culture which is what we are suffering from right now uh, we are living in a matriarchy the illusion is that it's patriarchy it is in fact a matriarchy everything that we are dealing with right now is because people are emotional women have power women are in positions of power and they're mm -hmm. women we're we are more emotional than men most women are more emotional than what women. about someone like chelsea handler so i do another show when i'm not doing pbd that this does it discusses this exact same topic right and Chelsea Handler like attacked me. I went back at her. Oh my God. We went back yeah. and forth, and you know she she's like, "This is what an alpha." Yeah. But you know, I think it's flirting. You, you I know, think it was yeah. hardcore flirting. Yeah. You know, I'm into those uh, fifty year old uh, that drink vodka drunk, at 8 uh, alcoholic yeah. uh, drug addicts. Well, well, you're not, you're not married yet. But, I thought that was step one. You, you've gone to to, you've been not so kind, and you went to war with Sarah Silverman, the Chelsea Handler, these almost fifty year old women who could have had any guy they wanted in their twenties, mm -hmm. beautiful, smart, intelligent, what have you. You obviously to chose a totally different and path. You started snorting feminism yes. and looking at what their lives are. And you consider yourself a trad wife, I would assume. Yeah. You somehow have this balance of being, you know, beautiful, but also intelligent, but also a mom and also a career woman. Like, so essentially, what's your message for women out there? Can you actually have it all? Or do you kind of have to pick no. the trad wife you, or the you career wife? You need to wife? prioritize. Yeah, you need to prioritize. And I think the answer for most women is it. it uh, prioritize your family, no question, no question. You know, mm -hmm. there are some women that I would say, I met this girl and she probably shouldn't be a mom, right? Yeah. But the truth is, is that, that your greatest superpower that you will ever tap into, the uh, I have never been more confident in who I am, more sure of myself than si since I became a mother, you know, getting married right. and becoming a mother. Yeah. Can I give you a little maybe pushback? Yeah. If you had to choose one, Meaning mother, mother, three kids, mother. Candace Owens, mother. political pundit, even, Daily Wire. Mother. You'd give it all up just to be a mother. Yeah. Why don't women not understand that exact same topic? Because it's not talked about culturally, because I'm considered counterculture, right? That's not mainstream. How are you saying that? How, how, how dare you say that? Women are being told that they should be like men. By the way, we're getting the worst end of the deal. I don't know who sat down and had the feminist meeting in the beginning and was like, hey, so here's how we're really gonna make men lose. Um, first, we're just gonna keep sleeping with them with no commitment, right? We're gonna just, <laughs> just gonna be hoes, right? Yeah. yeah, oh, men are really gonna hate yeah. that. We're gonna trick them. And then right. we're gonna be naked <laughs> on the me. internet yeah. all the time. Yeah. We're just gonna put our boobs yeah. out there. We're yeah. gonna fight to free the nipple. Right. Men are really gonna hate that. And right? we're also gonna work our asses off just like men. <laughs> yeah, and then we're gonna say, we're going to work just yeah. like you and we're going to bring in the same men are really going to I don't know this yeah. is the worst deal ever I'm like wait wait wait. do you mean to tell me that there was a time where we got to just be at home and cook and hang out with other women and raise our kids and somebody ruined that bring me that woman yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do you think you know like and on top of that men get to compete in your sport yeah what? and that's okay that's, that's, because yeah. that's Insane. noble that's, that's awesome. noble yeah. and who you supported know? that women yeah. women feminists you know yes. how they say like progressives one you, know, you can't stop something as it's progressing. Is this the one issue that you think can regress? Like women will be like, you know, I don't know how many women are like, that's it. I'm going back to the home. I'm putting my apron on. I'm going to be happening. a good wife. I think do you now, actually think that's realistic, though? I do. I think it's happening because what's what we're getting to now is the end of that overt sexualization period. And I always say to people, I'm like, examine the women that are telling you that this is going to bring you happiness. Who, mm -hmm. who are the women that are out there that have told you that this is the way to go? Where are their lives right now? Are they are they are they married? Nope. The mul multiple partners? Yes. By the time they get to Chelsea Handler, and why I always use her as an example is because I was a huge fan of Chelsea Handler when I was younger. I thought she was so funny. I always watch Chelsea lately, and um, I bought all of her books. And you know, obviously, she she wrote extensively. She actually wrote about her multiple abortions, things of that nature. So she had a chance at family and she yeah. chose against it because she decided that she was gonna be young and beautiful forever and she isn't and wasn't going to be young and beautiful forever, right? And so Chelsea Hamlin's a perfect example because when you play with feminism for too long and you can't go backwards, it inevitably ends with Xanax and wine and prescriptions um, and misery. Yeah. And now Chelsea Handler is realizing that biology is always going to trump sociology in the end. In the end, biology sits back and it wins, right? Father time is undefeated. Right. Oh, it's man. it's literally, it, it wins. And so now she's got nothing to nurture. And what happens is those women then start looking for a social philosophy, a social justice movement that they can try to turn into the son and daughter that they
they don't have, right? I'm like, do you, you do, and does anybody really think Chelsea Handler cares about like Dylan Mulvaney being allowed no. to go into the right bat? No, no, of course she doesn't. Nobody could care that much about Dylan Mulvaney. I mean, when I heard her crying on her podcast, oh, yeah, right. Mulvaney, I was like, you need a child so bad. bad. Yeah, yes. Adam, so get, bad. I'm like, get I'm like, I'm like you want to babysit do. Chelsea? Well, she can't have kids <laughs> anymore. <laughs> question, um, Candace, last question on this topic. Where do you draw the line? Meaning, all right, so women should go to high school. Obviously, women should go to college. You went to college. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go to college for what reason? To get a return on your investment, to get a job. Okay, I get a job. I'm making money. You said you paid back 150 grand in student I loans. I never did. You've made something in your yeah. career. I made a mistake. You made a career. Should have waited. Yeah. But like, waited. Are, you telling, are you saying that women shouldn't go to college? Like I interviewed this guy, yeah. Nick Fuentes, if you know who he was, communications director for Kanye, which I'm sure we could talk about. But... He said women should not go to college. They shouldn't even finish high school, basically. Just well, well, I want stay to be clear. Most people should yeah. not go to college. Okay. Okay. I just want to be, make that very I'm clear. I'm with you. Forget, not that. women or men. Yes. It is what are you going to college for? I yeah. went to college because there was a peer pressure campaign in high school. If you don't go to college, you're going to be a failure. And I think that that's the reason most people go to college is because the idea of being the kid that goes to community college is not, it means that you're the kid that's a loser and failed. You're the so everybody kid. signs up for loans with money that they don't have, which marries you further to the state. You know, uh, Sa Sally May loans are the ones that I took out, which were egregious. I didn't understand anything I was signing because I didn't come from a wealthy family. I was first generation college kid. I was completely taken advantage of and started my life in mass debt for a journalism degree. Is, is that, does that sound like something that any person should be doing? It's completely irrational. I actually think there needs to be a, a, a collapse of the scam of college. You know, you uh, people should be getting mm -hmm. internships out of high school to figure out what the heck they want to do before they waste a bunch of money on a meaningless degree. The majority of people are wasting their money. I don't know many people that are using their actual degree in the real world, right? Yeah. The girls go and they sign up and they do fashion and marketing design, you know, and the guys, if you're doing a, you want to be a doctor and you know for sure, yeah. that's what I want to do. Yeah, sure, go to college if you, yeah. if you have that vision and you're sure of yourself. But right now, the whole college scam is what needs to collapse. Well, you did a video called College is a Scam. It is. So it's, um, I, you have no idea how many girls that I talk to and interview, they go to college, they graduate, and they become bartenders yep. or servers. And, they're, and, and they I'm can like, pay off their debt. I'm like, why the hell did you even go to college? Like, I don't know, I was supposed to. Mm -hmm. But you did a video, College is a Scam, but you're, you're uh, what, you want your kids to go to college? Your girls are going to college? Like, how do you guys as parents grapple with what she's saying? I, I've answered this question a couple times, and I've talked about uh, STEM. And I'm very clear with my girls and says, I'll fund STEM, I'll fund skills that are going to be applicable with an appropriate ROI. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have set aside the funds for their college education and up the amount twice in the last 10 years so that we could have enough getting there. And I think the price is a little crazy, but I'll fund STEM. I'll absolutely fund STEM. You know, hey, I want to go with my boyfriend, Philippe, to the Sorbonne and study art history. Well, I hope yeah. as effing parents are wealthy and cover you um, <laughs> because I will not be. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll go that route. And also, you know, I think, you know, uh, cardiologists, physicians, nuclear physicists. I think none of that should be self-taught in, in the garage, specifically nuclear physicists. <laughs> and that they, there's a reason for STEM. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for STEM. But also Ann Coulter, you'll probably know about this, made a great point. She said, if someone was graduating high school, she said, and the plumber is sitting there in his best and only suit that he has, proudly looking at his son graduating, and says, my son's coming to work for me as a plumber. And he says, why? And the kid says, because I make 60 bucks an hour working with my dad's company. And everybody goes, a plumber makes 60 bucks an hour? Mm -hmm. They have, the kids don't have any idea about trades. This is where I think, in terms of gap years, Israel gets it right. Because you have service mm -hmm. of country and you have disciplines that come out of that. Mm -hmm. And they all don't stay in the military, but they sure as hell come out with disciplines and appreciation for no the country. No question about that. That's right. No yeah. question Absolutely. about that. Absolutely.